Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. I had some requests uh, the last two weeks, I guess it is, for a video on how I have my Lightroom workflow and save my pictures. So uh, this is how I do it. I, it works for me really, really well. And um, so let's get to it. First, it's actually not Lightroom. Lightroom is not first in this process, okay? The reason for that is I prefer to, to copy all of my pictures with Windows Explorer, or if you're on a Mac, you'd use the Mac Finder, copy them over to the folder first. I found that for me, again, this is all about the way that I'm doing it, then hopefully you can adapt it to, to what you have in your computer and your everything. It works better for me. So, first thing I do is go into my dedicated drive that I have for my photos, which is right here and I create a new folder. Now obviously this is a mock folder, but that's okay. So today's date, uh, 831, and uh, obviously that is uh, four digit year, two digit month, two digit day, underscore, and then the client, C-L-I-E-N-T name, and then um, this particular thing is scenic, but it could be a portrait, it could be anything. So uh, this, you know, this is what it is. Then I go back through here, and I actually copy this, Control C to copy, and go into that folder. Then I create a new folder and call it raw. Okay. Then uh, down the road, what will end up happening is I'll have another new folder and call it PSD because I'll have some PSD files that I'll have worked it. Uh, so those are the the main files that I keep. Uh, I don't keep any of my JPEGs that I export, and actually I export them. To a whole nother place. I'll actually show you that folder here somewhere. There and there. So that's actually the folder where all of my exports go in this whole separate folder system because I just see them as a, the JPEGs as a temporary file before I upload them to the lab or before I do anything with them. So that's what you want, right? And so that's just the way that it works for me. So anyway, back to the folder I was at. So we have this raw folder. And saving space, by the way, too. What you don't save those JPEGs. Next, pop my card in to my card reader. Or plug your camera in, but whichever works. Now there's only three pictures here. So I'm going to copy them over into that new raw folder. And there's only three, so it's going to be very quick. And these are actually just a card with three pictures left on it when I was out in Vegas. Next step is to either drag and drop this folder into Lightroom. Okay, and it brings up the import dialog box. Or just hit import and then go through the finder in order to, pick, to, to grab them. But uh, obviously I'm just going to do the drag and drop method because it works good. And of course I need to hit include subfolders because for some reason that's not selected by default and I haven't figured out how to get that to work so if you know how to do that let me know every new catalog that I create it always does it so alright so now I'm gonna import those pictures there's my three pictures you know one of my other pet peeves about Lightroom is it automatically goes to this collection up here previous import when I'm importing the pictures and that drives me absolutely crazy I want to get down to the actual folder of images who cares about your previous import thing. It drives me nuts that it all is always set up that way and it, it, it just defaults to that as soon as it has the import. It drives me crazy. Anyway, here's my pictures. And um, so next step. Uh, actually, you know what I forgot? I forgot. Let me delete the... Da, 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 da. Let me No, you know what I'll do? We'll come back in here. In my import dialog box um, you can automatically rename them right away. I don't like to do that. Uh, but apply during import and metadata. Okay. If you choose that metadata and you set that up once, it should save that. Maybe that's what I need to do uh, for that whole folder. Uh, automatically includes uh, subfolders. Anyway, choose this. Uh, set up your own. Oh, there goes the scanner again. Uh, choose your own metadata. Set up your metadata. Maybe even set up your own set of develop settings okay and get that going so that it's imported and set up on every single picture as soon as it goes in 
Okay, you can add a few keywords here too, but I don't like to do that. But at least have your, your name, your phone number, your website, maybe your address, all that kind of stuff in there. That's a good place to start. Okay. Anyway, then you'll have some of your metadata in there. As you see, mine is, and that's what I want. So that's like the beginning stuff. That's like the big stuff that you're going to put in there. So next step. Say, w next step would be, okay, I'm going to start ranking these and, and figuring out what's what. So do I like this picture? Nah, I don't like this one. But I like this one better and I like that one. Okay, so I've now ranked them. And as you see, I ranked them with the stars. I actually used the keyboard shortcut with the number one, either on the number pad over on the side over here or with this number right here well, either one okay and so these are the two that I'm keeping and actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hit the X key I love keyboard shortcuts and delete this one because it just so happens that I don't care about this one I don't like this one uh, you know maybe you would have a hundred photos in here so it might take a time or even a thousand photos this step might take you a little bit of time uh, especially if it's a wedding or a large portrait session, it might take you some time to do this. But figure out the ones that you're going to delete. Figure out the ones that you're going to keep. The and uh, and then third things that ones you're going to show to the client. So let's do that. This is one that I'm going to delete. This is one that I'm going to keep. This is the one that I'm going to show to the client. Okay. So one star client, zero stars keep. X or reject to delete. Now why do I use the reject? because I can hit control and backspace and it'll automatically find those rejected photos and then I can hit delete from disk okay control and backspace or if you're not into those yet you can go up here to photo and delete rejected photos okay now key to this remember that thing I told you earlier about this previous import thing and how it doesn't work very well uh, okay, I lied. Sorry. It didn't work in before. Whatever. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to delete this picture. Control backspace. It's going to automatically sort. As you see, the attributes have the uh, delete, and so I want to delete from disk. That photo is now gone. Now I have my keepers and I have my showers. All right. Now that all of my deletes are gone, this is when I rename. Okay. F2 is a shortcut key to rename and I actually have a custom rename sequence now this one is the same so client name is the same as the folder okay so my top level folder is named client as year year month year 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 month month day day then the custom text which is client name and then the 001 which is the sequence number so it's the same throughout the top level folder, the raw folder, as well as the file name. All right, then you don't get, don't see that stupid DSC, you know, four four two three thing. I hate that. People don't rename their files. All right, so now I've renamed them. Next step is to go in here and add your title, your caption, and your keywords. All right, I'm not going to do that now and bore you with that, but that would be your next step. To go ahead and label all of those add at least a title at the very very least you want to add some kind of a title so for example if i was going to title this whoops i was going to title this i would say las as my emails coming in las vegas skyline oops las vegas cityscape at dusk okay perfect now it has a title so in other words, I can search for that. I can find that if I wanted to very, very easily. Okay. Next step, develop. We go in, we develop, whether it's in the quick develop. Okay. And let's just add some blacks and that'll be good for now. Develop. So that's our develop picture. Okay. This is the one that we're going to send to the client and then we go to file and we hit export and we export them. It is that simple. Okay two keys to it number one you have a dedicated folder or hard drive for all of your pictures as you see this X drive right here is my 2011 right here 2011 
archive, okay? That's all of my pictures from 2011 are on in this one drive. And then I take that drive with my backups and I back that up to another location, okay? That's how that that's how I it works best for me. Keeps them sorted. Um, uh, typically a one terabyte drive will hold all of them from one year, at least as of right now. If there's a new camera that comes out, obviously that might change. I might be going to a two terabyte drive uh, if it's a much bigger file. But hey, you know we we do with what we can. And two terabyte drives are getting cheap too. They're down to you know seventy nine, eighty nine dollars if you buy them off of say Newegg.com or Amazon for a two terabyte hard drive. They're getting really cheap, so there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to separate your photos and then make extra backups just so you don't lose anything because I guarantee your hard drive will fail it's just a matter of when alright so that's how I organize everything that's how my workflow goes I know it was a really quickie video but hopefully you'll watch it a couple of times and of course ask me questions I'd love to hear it Greg Cazillo Cazillo.com